Satnam. Okay, here's a meditation for your third chakra. And I'm sure some of you are like, uh, my third what? So chakra, what are chakras? Chakras are these spinning wheels, these energy vortexes, this information that floats through our spine, starts out at our rectal area and then comes all the way up and then through the top of our head. And then we have seven different chakras. And for today's purposes, just think of chakras as this. You have different systems in your body, your cardiovascular system, right? We have a heart, pulse, moves the blood around. We have our digestive system, various organs that are associated with that. They have their job to do. We have our muscles, we have our skeletal system. All of these systems of our body each have their own job to do. Chakras are the same way. They have a particular function for us and their function helps to connect us in a way that sustains us, brings us joy, brings us light, brings us love, brings us happiness. When they're out of balance, so are you. So what we're going to work on today again is the third chakra. So what does the third chakra do? What's its job? Its job is to connect you to you. That's its job. So many people are having all kinds of digestive problems. So where is the third chakra located? Well, the third chakra located right around your navel center. Hmm, interesting. Where so much bloating is taking place. When we digest our foods, there are also aspects of us that we digest our life. And if our life is not sitting with us well, we're going to have physical reactions towards an emotional and mental component of ourself. So what we're doing is we're trying to work at a subtler level to have an effect on our third chakra, to understand who we are, where we are, what we want, what we need, and be able to act from and I've said this before, what's called our mind gut, our ability to know viscerally what to do, when to do it, how to act, when to act, not just with our mind, our brain. We intellectualize so many things, we justify so many things, but viscerally speaking, we know what to do, whether we pay attention to that, that's an entirely different story. But anyway, we're gonna work on the third chakra, connect you to you, help with all kinds of physical problems, as well as problems that you may be having with knowing what direction to go in your life. It gives you a sense of balance, a sense of self, and a sense of centeredness. It's a mantra-based meditation, very lovely, very lovely mantra. I'll describe it after we tune in. So, let's tune in. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo, the Adi Mantra. Ever so grateful to the yogis who have brought this information down to us, giving us the ability to tighten all our loose screws. So, sit tall, chest out, chin in, relax your shoulders, relax your elbows, close your eyes, bring your attention for your eye focus to the bridge of your nose, the point in between the eyebrows, our point of intuition, our pituitary gland. Now take in a nice, slow, deep breath and then pause it at the top. And then exhale it. Then do that again. Inhale deep. Breathe in deep to begin. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. Deep breath. Om. Oh. 
describes the cycle of life. We're born, we live, we die. Cycle of life. G-O-D. Hamiham Brahmham. We are we, we are God, or we are one. This is what you'll be chanting. Hamiham Brahmham. What you want to do when you say this is you want to use the tip of your tongue to touch the roof of your palate. So it will sound a little funny when you say it because you're really trying to flick your tongue against the roof of, the, of your palate, the top of your palate. So hummy hum, brahm hum. So really get that tongue to touch the top every single time. So it will sound a little bit funny. Hummy hum, brahm hum, hummy hum, brahm hum. You want to touch the tongue. So again, you're not pronouncing the word quite correctly as far as listening to it, but your tongue is what the important part of this is. So you're going to touch. Hum, hum, brum, hum. Touch the tongue. Okay. The second thing we're going to be doing is our hands are going to be in prayer mudra, prana mudra. And we're going to keep them at the level of the chest. And what we're going to do is we're going to press each time we say hum, hum, brum, hum. So what we're going to do is we're going to press as we say hum, hum, brum, hum. So hum, hum. Brahm hum. Now I'm separating my hands just so you can see it because you won't be able to see me that I'm using pressure, but hummy hum, brahm hum. But your hands stay together. Hummy hum, brahm hum. So it's sort of like a, a, a little exercise. You should feel it in the chest a little bit because you want you want some pressure. You're not just you know being gentle about this. You want to push, push, push. So hummy hum, brahm hum. But again, keeping the hands together. Hummy hum, brahm hum. It's like a heartbeat. Yogi Bhajan described it as a heartbeat. As well, at the same time as you're doing that, your navel point. So this is where the third chakra comes in. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull it in sharply at the same time we're pressing our hands with hummy hum brahm hum. So hummy hum brahm hum. Watch my tip, watch my belly. Hummy hum brahm hum. Hummy hum brahm hum. Hummy hum. Hum. So, three things we're doing. We're pulling our navel point in, hummy hum, brahm hum, pulsing our palms together with each repetition, and also when we're reciting this, tip of our tongue, touch the palate. So again, it'll sound a little bit funny, but that's what you want. You want the tip of the tongue touching, hands pulsing, belly pulling in on each time we say each word. Hummy, hum, brahm, hum. So, hummy, hum, brahm, hum. So, you're gonna have a slight release in between each one of those. So, hummy, release, hummy, brahm, hum, release, right? So, hummy, release, brahm, release, hummy, brahm. Jeez, I'm losing my train of thought here. Hummy, hum, brahm, hum. Pull in on each word, release when you're in between. I think that makes more sense. I was getting tongue-tied there. 
So, <clears throat> 11 minutes. We're going to stare down the tip of our nose. We're going to sit tall, chest out, chin in as always. Stare down the tip of the nose as we do what was just described to you. 11 minutes. This is by Narinjan Kar, Amiham Brahman. 11 minutes. Here we go. Ready? Pull in the navel point when you're pressing. Press the palms when you hear the words. Touch the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Stare down the tip of your nose. Chin in, sit tall. Thank you. 
Very important. Listen to what you're saying. Listen to the words. Thank you. 
chance if you're watching this video you do realize that we are so interconnected with one another every single person that is in your life right now is ideally situated for your personal growth everybody the quote-unquote good people you have in your life and the quote-unquote bad people that you have in your life they're all there to help you along the way teach you a lesson if you will to further dive into who you are. Do you allow yourself to rise up out of the muck, come through the waters, sit on top of a lily pad like the lotus flower? Lotus flower is that enlightenment. It is that seventh chakra opening up becoming the thousand petal lotus, your ability to connect to the divine, to the universe of consciousness. However, it is still rooted, it is still here. The difference is, is that it takes its roots within the muck, comes through the waters, gives itself a platform to rest upon, and then it blossoms. So too 
can do. This meditation helps you to connect to that center of self. Self-doubt, self-criticism, mind, blah, 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 blah. Chatting at you all the time. Bring yourself to a centered point. Stay connected and stay sharp. As always, I wish you well. Sat down.